In your headlines, officials begin the distribution of the inflation stimulus, and the TCI hospital reviews its inpatient visitation policy. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to PTV News Watch. Thanks for tuning in on this Wednesday, August 10th, 2022. I'm Khalees Williams with today's newscast. The real news starts now. It's expected to be a busy day at the respective island treasuries today, August 10th, as officials begin the distribution of the second inflation stimulus assistance. Newswatch has more. Today, Wednesday, August 10th, marks the beginning of the distribution process of the second inflation stimulus for Islanders. This line represents the scores of persons who have presumably been approved for the first batch of payments. This latest stimulus was motivated by the recent inflation brought about by the war between Russia and Ukraine, which resulted in a significant spike in fuel, which trickled down to a rise in the cost of living, not only in the TCI, but worldwide. Rising prices of fuel, supply chain issues, increasing commodity prices, and skyrocketing food cost has negatively impacted the purchasing power of every household. And according to the Department of Statistics, inflation is now running at somewhere around 9.1%. Bills are increasing at such a fast pace that salaries can't keep up. Households in the lower income brackets are disproportionately washed off because the majority of their earnings are spent on rent, food, and electricity, and they have very little wiggle room to cover the buffer and, the, and further increases. Residents called on government for a resolve, and this stimulus was just one of the temporary solutions, coupled by a review of jobs and duty concessions. And so the cabinet agreed today to offer Turks and Caicos Islanders what we call a price inflation stimulus. Yes, a price inflation stimulus, a package of $16 million. Persons with first names beginning with A to C are the lucky firsts lined up for the commencement of collections at the Providenciales Treasury. Approved applicants are once again reminded to walk with a TCI government-issued ID and their application numbers. Officials expect that this process will go a lot smoother than the last, which was not mandated to be in any specific order, just a time frame for persons to collect. A six-month period has been granted for collection, which ends in February. Collection times are Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. In this next story, we take a look at the latest on the Migrant Health Review, one of the topics discussed during the latest Ministry of Health Address to the nation. Take a look. Chief Medical Officer of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Jeremy Meyer, says their review to the process of migrant health documentation and procedures has yielded some positive results. However, these are some of the discrepancies that led to that review. We did receive quite a number. And when we reviewed the applications, the information on it in terms of where it was coming from, the doctor who would have signed it, the stamp that we were seeing it was um, extremely concerning. So we did reach out through the Haitian consulate and got their recommendations for these two facilities, which we believed would give us a fair coverage of um, serving that population because one facility is in Port-au-Prince and the other is in Capete. So for now, um, just to ensure that the process is maintained in terms of the security and integrity, we decided to go that route and um, hope persons can understand why. Dr. Meyer says some of the information submitted was alarmingly fraudulent and could not go unnoticed or unheeded. It was severe um, in terms of the type of information that we were seeing. Um, so, for example, for persons and their childhood immunizations, we would see dates of administration on the vaccine cards that were completely, completely not in keeping with any world standard. Um, some of the information on some pages, you'd see a mismatch in some of the names. Um, it, it can go on. We can write a book in terms of the discrepancies that we've seen. So it was, um, it was really bad. 
Acting Minister of Health Honorable E.J. Saunders says as a result, they were able to implement both medium and long-term measures in order to curb the data integrity issues, as well as to make the process more user-friendly. These measures included a requirement for in-country testing of those persons traveling from high-risk countries, as well as for the Ministry of Health to no longer accept applications from members of the public on behalf of persons from high-risk countries. The Migrant Health Unit will only accept medical applications from locally licensed health care providers and pre-approved employers on behalf of persons seeking to come into the country for work reasons from high-risk countries. And the Ministry of Health will enter into uh, MOUs, uh, that's a memorandum of understandings, with the local medical facilities to agree on pricing and uh, to be able to vet and verify the tests that uh, persons are going to be sending to them from the high-risk countries particularly. And these are just some of the amendments made to that process. As most of the TCI's migrant population hails from Haiti, government has also recently stipulated the hospital Bernard Mevs and Comfessa to be the only two facilities in Haiti to which officials will accept medical certificates. In an event, officers are unable to verify or authenticate a medical certificate. They are now at liberty to request an applicant to reapply for that certificate. The Turks and Caicos Islands Hospital continues to review its inpatient protocol for visitation to keep patients, families, and staff safe. Newswatch has more. On the afternoon of August 8, 2022, the Turks and Caicos Islands Hospital released a PR statement concerning changes to their visitation policy. In the press release, they claim that they are modifying their policy to ensure the health of high-risk patients, families, and staff. In consideration of COVID-19 trends, the hospital is continuing to assess and review their protocols. The policies currently in place are as follows. Visitation for the inpatient unit will remain from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. The hospital will continue to allow two visitors per patient. The visiting persons should be made known to staff members so that they may be recorded in the medical records. The two visiting persons, covering the nose and mouth, following social distancing protocols and sanitizing their hands. Individuals should avoid visiting if they are portraying symptoms of COVID-19 or other infectious diseases in order to protect vulnerable and high-risk patients. As a security measure, the expected visitors should present their government picture ID to ensure appropriate confirmation of the persons identified by the patient. All visitors to the inpatient unit must have a COVID-19 lateral flow test, which is an antigen test, performed in their name, confirmed by their ID, as it was detected that a few persons had used test results with other persons' data. The lateral flow test result is valid for up to five days from the day it was taken and will need to be repeated for visits extended beyond five days. Concerning testing at the hospital, COVID-19 lateral flow tests can be done on weekdays free of charge from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the laboratory at the Cheshire Hall Medical Center and 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the laboratory at the Cockburn Town Medical Center. Tests can also be obtained privately through your family physician or the Ministry of Health's community screening locations. An identification card must accompany all test results. Please avoid using the emergency department for visitor testing or community testing as its main focus is providing care to emergency patients. One person will be allowed for any surgical patient and return for the discharge of that said patient. This accompanying person will not require a lateral flow test or rapid test. A parent or guardian of a minor or mentally challenged patient will be allowed for the admission of the patient. Because he or she will be in the unit for prolonged periods, they must complete a lateral flow test valid for up to five days. We'll be right back with more News Watch when we return.
This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. The Ministry of Health is reminding residents to get vaccinated against polio after the United States recorded a case of the disease on July 21st. Details in this report. On July 21st, surveillance conducted by the New York State Department of Health reported the identification of a single case of paralytic poliomyelitis in an unvaccinated individual in Rockland County. Initial sequencing confirmed by the CDC revealed that it was a case of vaccine-derived poliovirus type 2. Investigations were immediately launched. Then on August 4, wastewater samples taken from two different locations in Orange County, New York, during the months of June and July tested positive for the virus, which suggests possible community spread. The Health Ministry of the TCI is assuring residents that the TCI remains polio-free. The last reported case of polio in the TCI was in 1978. Although the country is considered to have good herd immunity, when a country coverage of above 90% in primary doses over decades, there are still unvaccinated residents who are at great risk of contracting the disease if they come in contact with the virus. Because of the nature of the disease, one case of polio in the TCI is considered an outbreak. Currently, the primary health care department is only offering polio vaccines to children as part of the routine vaccination program. Plans are on the way to procure additional supply of the vaccine for unvaccinated individuals and adults who are unsure of their immune status. While the vaccine is only being offered at this time to children, the ministry is encouraging parents of unvaccinated children to bring them in for their missing doses. Poliomyelitis or polio is a crippling disease caused by one of the three related viruses, poliovirus type 1, 2, or 3. It is spread through the fecal or oral route, which means the virus enters the body through the mouth when people eat or drink food contaminated with the feces of an infected person. The virus multiplies in the bloodstream, invades the nerve cells and results in damage or destruction causing paralysis. The virus spreads easily in areas with poor hygiene. Signs and symptoms of polymyelitis include fever, loose stool, sore throat, upset stomach, headache, stomach ache, severe muscle pain, and paralysis. Complications of polio can result in death if respiratory muscles of the chest are infected. Ventilator support and intense physiotherapy is needed to regain full function in such cases. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Ants. This story has so much valid information that we thought we'd run it again just in case you missed it. In November 2020, in response to the unfavorable prevailing economic impact of COVID-19 on the working population of the Turks and Caicos Islands, the National Insurance Board introduced a temporary unemployment benefit assistance program, other known as TUBAP. This benefit allowed eligible persons who had become involuntary unemployed due to the fallout of COVID-19 to receive 50% of their average weekly insurable earnings up to a maximum of eight weeks paid as a lump sum. The purpose of providing this benefit was to alleviate the financial burdens of many unemployed and underemployed persons, as possible as hundreds of employers and self-employed persons at that time had temporarily or indefinitely closed their doors, laid off staff, introduced shift work systems, reduced hours or days of work, introduced work from home operations. During the period of November 2020 to November 2021, the National Insurance Board paid out over $3.9 in 
temporary unemployment benefit assistance to some 2,621 persons throughout the Turks and Caicos Islands without any increase in the contribution rate. Although a temporary benefit based on the response from the NIB's beneficiaries reportedly, they agree that this benefit was indeed very timely and greatly appreciated, providing a life-saving source of funds for many who were unable to make ends meet at the time to pay electricity, rent, mortgage, personal loans, or put food on their tables. As a responsible and caring social security institution, the NIB say they must continue to make decisions in the best interest of their contributors and beneficiaries, promising to be proactive rather than reactive, prepared and positioned to protect their working population from the future temporary losses of employment through no fault of their own. Accordingly, on April 1, 2022, the National Insurance Board reinforced that same unemployment safety net by introducing the permanent phase of the TUBAP, the Unemployment Insurance Benefit Program. This new benefit allows unemployed workers who have become involuntary unemployed an even greater level of coverage and increases the number of their income replacement benefits. This additional benefit will attract a modest increase of an additional 1%, which is already included in the total 2% increase of the April 1st, 2022 contribution rate. Find out what the 10 most frequently asked questions and answers are regarding this benefit in our succeeding newscast. Don't move just yet. Coming up next is your weather forecast after this break. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providenciales, Mydees Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, mostly sunny skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For South Caicos, mostly sunny skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, mostly sunny skies, High 85, low 80, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key, mostly sunny skies. High 85, low 79, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And on Providencialis, mostly sunny skies. High 85, low 79, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's your sunrise and sunset. 
sunrise 6 26 a.m sunset 7 24 p.m now for your high and low tides high tides 7 37 a.m 8 05 p.m low tides 1 35 a.m 1 41 p.m and for your hurricane outlook for the north atlantic caribbean sea and the gulf of mexico a tropical wave located several hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Some gradual developments of this system is still possible over the next few days. However, environmental conditions are forecast to become less favorable by this weekend. This system is expected to move westward to west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the tropical Atlantic during the next several days. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. That's the end of today's edition of Newswatch. But don't forget you can always catch us on our website at www.ptv8tci.com and every weekday right here at 6.30 p.m. I'm Kalise Williams. Stay informed. Thanks for watching.